Joe Biden was at a fundraiser on Thursday and he raised the prospect of nuclear Armageddon. He said the prospect of Armageddon is higher than it's been since Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. He says that Vladimir Putin is not joking when he talks about potential use of tactical nuclear weapons or biological or chemical weapons because his military is, you might say, significantly underperforming. Laser eyes. Anyway, I love a little bit of um, Dark Brandon when he mocks the uh, inability of an imperial power to conquer a sovereign state. Anyway, he goes on to say, we've not faced this prospect since Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. We have a direct threat of the use of nuclear weapons if in fact things continue down the path they are going. I'm trying to figure out what is Putin's off ramp? Where does he find a way out? Where does he find himself in a position that he does not only lose face but lose significant power within Russia? And acknowledging as I always do that I am not an expert on international relations. It was one of my focuses in grad school, but I didn't get the PhD. So you don't have to listen to me. I did a little bit of research and I have actually identified the off ramp. It is the entire eastern border of Ukraine. You went across it that way, now just go across it that way and you are off the ramp there, no more issues. Jessica, what do you think? Are you worried about uh, tactical nukes being used? I think it's very interesting we're at a point where, think about the Cuban Missile Crisis. This was on the news every day, everybody was talking about it while it was going on. In the White House, it was lived 24 seven. But today in America, if what Joe Biden is saying is true, and we are on the brink of nuclear war in this world, everyone's just like, yeah, oh well. Just another day in America, like <laughs> life is so bad for everyday people that they're like, well, if it happens, it happens. What does that say about how Joe Biden's doing as a president in the state of our country? I think it says a lot that people are not particularly disturbed at the prospect of nuclear Armageddon. But the thing is, is like the United States has also been an aggressor in the situation of Ukraine and Russia. And for Biden to say, oh, well, now Putin might use nukes, it's like you had years to negotiate with with Ukraine. And like Donald Trump did not do a great job. So Biden, maybe it's months for Biden, but they had mm -hmm. ample time to solve this diplomatically before it got to the point we're at now where we're spending billions on this war in Ukraine and not doing much to deescalate ourselves. We're not really supporting these peace talks. We haven't taken a position where it's like, yes, we acknowledge there is a presence of growing fascism and Nazism in Ukraine. Let's talk with an international body about how to resolve that. The United States isn't doing a great job proposing solutions either. That being said, for Putin to react with nuclear arms usage because he is losing a war that is being fought for imperial reasons because he wants to annex Ukraine is also insane. Everybody's crazy and it's crazy that these guys are representing people who really don't support any of this. Like I guarantee you most people in Russia, most people in the United States have no skin in the game. People in Ukraine are very unhappy about what's happening. But let's be real, the people that these leaders represent who are being super unhinged with how they're using weapons that could cause mass destruction, it's insane. Like these are supposed to be democratic countries, but our democracy hardly ever extends to foreign policy. We just trust these guys to just make decisions on our behalf that yeah. have huge consequences. Yeah, look, I, I'm not in Russia. Maybe the case being made domestically is is effective, maybe people are fired up about this. That hasn't seemed to be the impression I've gotten. But of course, the news that I get out of Russia is of course incredibly filtered. It seems like generally imperial powers do a better job of creating a pretext for this sort of thing. Like, you know, I, I live, my political awakening was in the run up to the invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq. And, and I know how much pressure the media was putting on people to bow down and support the war. This just seems so tangent, that's why I joke about like, Literally just leave the country. Like I, I I know that it's not as simple as that, but it feels like it should be. There's there's nothing to be gained there. Like just just freaking go. Just go and stop having tens of thousands of your people needlessly die, even before you start launching weapons of mass destruction. It is it is absolute madness. And and look, bearing in mind that I, I didn't think that the invasion would happen, or if it was gonna happen, that it wouldn't have happened when it did. One of the reasons I think a lot of people aren't as worried about nuclear weapons being used, one of the reasons why I'm probably maybe naively not that worried about it is because it just does seem too crazy. It seems like, like I know that Russia wants to pretend that they don't need literally any allies or whatever. Um, I kind of feel like that's crossing a line that would be damaging for Putin at that point. So 
I don't know, maybe I could be proven wrong. Maybe you're gonna, you all out there are gonna watch the damage reports someday as the nuclear fallout drops. In that case, you could probably skip the show, spend some time with your family. Um, but I just, I don't see it happening. I hope that I'm wrong. Yeah, I think we can nerd out on the the international relations stuff for a second. Uh, both acknowledging neither of us have graduate degrees specifically in this, but it is interesting to think about, and everyone has a right to you know prospect, uh, think about the prospect of how they can be governed in an international way. Because right now we have an anarchic setup of states. There is no international government in the world. The United Nations is fully controlled by whatever country has the most power, i.e. the strongest military. That's the world we live in, it's like the wild west. As soon as you're in you know, international you know, waters or air, there's no governance there. The way we put representatives into the United Nations and other international governing bodies, which as we just covered are not people that are actually democratically representing people. It's just like, hey, this guy, uh, did some political favors for me during my electoral campaign, so I'm gonna make him an ambassador. That's usually how this, this type of thing goes, and it's someone who's made a career out of being a statesman in positions they were never elected to serve in. An alternative for that could be is if we elected our representatives to go represent us in international bodies. Crazy idea, uh, but actually it makes a lot of sense the more you think about it. Mm -hmm. You're saying like literally have like a presidential election across the nation to choose our rep at the UN? Yeah, I think every country should have elected representatives on a global level because we have so many problems that require global cooperation to solve like climate change. Yeah. That makes so much sense and I immediately start to worry <laughs> who the hell would end up getting elected? Oh, no. oh geez, I do like that though. That's a good idea, <laughs> I've never heard that proposed. Maybe we should make that happen. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.